Hi, this is My Keys to Music and I'm Mark. Thanks for joining me on part three of the Nord Sound Manager tutorial and training series. We're going to be connecting the Sound Manager today to the Nord Stage 3. With that in mind, if you haven't already installed the Sound Manager, please watch part one. If you want to learn more about how the Nord ecosystem works, how the files work, perhaps what the difference between a program and a bundle is, what samples are and how they all work together, I highly encourage you to watch part two. You'll get a much better background of the Nord ecosystem if you do that. If you're ready for part three, let's begin. So here's the Nord Sound Manager. I have it connected to my Nord Stage 3. I just finished doing a full factory restore of the unit with the latest version of everything. I've got the latest OS running and the latest version of the backup. And that's to give you guys an idea of what it would look like if you bought a brand new Nord Stage 3 or what it would look like after you did a full restore. We'll talk about how to do the restore in a little bit. First, let's get an overview of the Nord Sound Manager. The good news is once you learn some of these basic fundamentals, it applies to every area of the sound manager. So let's begin. First, there are five major areas of the Nord Sound Manager. You have the piano, and that's where you're going to see your piano samples stored. You have the sample library, and that's where you're going to see the sample library sounds stored. You have the program area, that's where your programs are stored and organized. Your synth area for the synth settings. And then the song area, any songs you might have created. Uh, will be stored there, or presented there. Each of these columns works the same way. You can sort by columns, and you'll see this tiny little triangle going up and down, and that tells you whether it's sorting A to Z or Z to A, and that can be handy. The other thing that you'll see is a filter here. In the case of piano filters, we see the different type of piano categories, grand, upright, electric, and so forth. So if I wanted to see just the electric pianos, I can focus on that. Also, as a filter, let me go to all. As a filter over here, you can actually type different letters or words or numbers. So I'll put in saloon, and you'll see there's my saloon sound. Or I can put in upright, and you'll see all the uprights, regardless of what category they may be in, although these are happen to all be in the upright category. Other things you can search for is the version. Let's say I wanted to see all the piano samples that were version 5.2. That's how I can do that. Probably the most important thing you can filter on, though, is the piano sizes. So let's, for example, look at all my extra larges. There we go. XL, these are my extra larges, and notice they span three different categories, electric, upright, and grand. Now, once these filters are applied, you can stack them. In other words, I have XL here showing me just the XL, but if I want to see just the grand XL, I can put both filters on and that will work like that. So I find that very handy, like if I want to see the smalls or the mediums and so forth. Now, at the bottom left will indicate how much memory is being used and how much is free. So you can see here I've got 1,986.1 megabytes used, which means the vast majority of my storage space is used from the factory. That's how it comes. They really stack it as full as it can get. If you want to add a sound from the Nord Sound Library online, you'll have to make some sacrifices. And in a few minutes, I'm going to show you what that would look like. And while we do that, we'll look at some other features like substitute and replace. At the bottom right here, you can see that we're connected to the Nord Stage 3, and the version of the OS is V1.36. At the top, I have an info button. So if I select that, a panel on the right appears. When I select a piano or a sound or a sample or a program, it will give me details about that entity. Here you can see I have one piano selected, I've got the full name of the piano, and it shows me that it's used by three programs. Now, if you're still a little confused as to what a program is versus a sample versus a synth setting versus a song, I recommend that you watch part two of the series. That way you'll learn the background of all these things, how they work together. Uh, without that sort of grounded information, foundational information, a lot of this is potentially going to wash right over you and you won't have a full grasp of it. So that is that. Now I can shift click by holding the shift key. I can select multiple pianos and then you'll see it stacks the information here. This can be handy to see exactly how these pianos are being used. Now let's go ahead and continue stacking this and I'll show you one other cool feature. Notice how each of these pianos have a size. 
they're relative to not only the size that they're sampled at, small, medium, large, extra large, but they're also shown here in terms of megabytes. Once they're all selected, if you focus your eyes down here, you'll see that it says six panels selected for a total of 93.9 megabytes. This is extremely handy if you wanna remove a batch of pianos and you wanna see how big that is when you're starting to work with these sounds and making sacrifices one for the other. So that is how the info button works. Now, if I attempt to resort these pianos, you'll note that Normally, you can just click and drag, and you'll see here that I'm getting a little crosshair saying I can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is because I'm not in organization mode. So simply click here under Organize, and you will, in fact, be able to move these things around. So I've just moved E Grand 3 from slot 9 to slot 10. While I'm on the subject of moving, I want to make special note that the pianos cannot be moved across categories. In other words, I can't move a grand categorized piano, such as E-Grand 3, into the upright area. Here I get a message, move failed. The file grand uh, E-Grand 3 mono, etc., etc., is not allowed to be moved to the grand. So you cannot commingle or move one piano in one category to another. And the other thing you can't do is you can't rename these. There's no way to rename these or recategorize them. So I think the reason for that is so that the integrity of the piano sample is stored so that when you bundle these pianos and programs down the road, you can import them into someone else's Nord or to one of your other Nords and the integrity of those pianos will be intact and it'll know whether that piano exists or not because they have a consistent name and a consistent category. On that same vein, you cannot rename regular samples either. The other thing you'll note that when I'm in organization mode is that you'll actually see both the populated slots, like we see here, and the empty slots. And for the piano categories, there's 20 slots each. So that's an important thing to note, and it kind of makes sense. If I'm allowed to drag a piano file around, I would want to drag it to an empty slot, perhaps. Now, the other thing is, if I drag one on top of the other, like if I want to drag the bright grand on top of the studio grand like this, you'll see how one line is slightly darker blue than the other. The dark blue line is the one that it's coming from. The light blue line is the one that it's going to, at least here on my Mac version of the Nord Sound Manager. Now, when I let go, you'll see that these sounds flip, just like that. Bright now is on top, Studio Grand is on the bottom, so I've switched the slots. So if you are passionate about organizing these in a certain way, maybe you like them alphabetical, these are all the options available to you. So it's more really a personal preference than anything else. It also gives the Nord engineers and technicians a place to store things, so in an organized fashion. That's why they're at least categorized by piano type and then the banks 1 through 20. Otherwise, it would be quite a long list. That is organized. Now notice, dual view is not available to me here on the piano setting. All right, that's just a, a minor tip there. We'll look at dual view in a second. The last thing I want to show you here is auto select. If I click on the auto select option and I then click any one of these pianos, first I click one and then as I move up and down with the arrow keys, it automatically selects the same sound on the Nord keyboard itself. So this is an easy way to trial each of these sounds. Also note that if you don't have this selected, or whether you do or you don't, you can double-click any one of these, and it will also select the sound within your Nord. All right, now, everything I just showed you is very consistent across all other areas. So that was the piano area. Let's go look at the sample library area. Okay, now sample libraries are not categorized in the same way that pianos are. They are just one giant group of 400 total slots. And now notice I still have my Organize button on, so that's why I'm seeing the empty slots along with the populated slots. Also note at the bottom left, now the memory settings have changed a little bit. Instead of showing me what's available in my piano storage area, it's showing me what's available in my sample library storage area, showing 476.1 used, 2.7 megabytes free. Here again we see that from the factory, your samples are completely full, essentially not allowing you room for anything else without making some sacrifices. All right. Dual view is now something we can talk about with the sample library. Now, the reason they created dual view, in my opinion, is that moving a file from one slot to another 
across 400 potential slots can be very cumbersome. Let me give you an example without dual view. If I wanted to move orchestra strings pizzicato from slot 5 to, let's say, slot 300, I'm going to do this sort of dance here. Now where I have to kind of wait and I have to kind of drag. And then by the time you get there, uh, you may have accidentally let go of the mouse and put this in the wrong spot. So that is cumbersome. Dual view then introduces a way to solve that problem. So here I'll leave my list starting from 1 through 42 on the left panel. On the right panel, and again, I'm just clicking on my mouse. I happen to be scrolling up. So if, if you have a wheel mouse, you can scroll up. If you don't, you can use these lines over here, no problem. So I'll go to, towards the back of the list, and let's say that I really want to start my strings uh, in the 300 range. So I'm going to then now, and I'll show you a combination of things here. I'll go ahead and just do orchestra and grab me anything that has orchestra strings in the title, such as this, these five sa samples. And I'm just going to shift click, and that's how I got to these. Now, notice a couple things about shift clicking. If I click on the first one, hold the shift key, and then click on the last one, it will select all the sounds within the range. And this is no different than most other computer programs or operating systems. But what if I just wanted the legato, uh, the tremolo, and the pizzicato? I can click on the legato, then I'll hold the command key instead of the shift key, and I'll just pluck the tremolo in the pizzicato like that. So I can select selectively click, and of course I can click on or off by holding that command key. So hold the command key, and you'll be able to do that. But in this case, I'm going to shift click, grab all those orchestra strings. I'm going to drag them over to slot 300. Left click drag them over to slot 300 and let go. And you'll see here that this sort of refilters itself to show that the strings are still within the filter, but now you can see the slots are 300 through 304. And of course you can see them here 300 through 304. So I've moved five strings over quite easily, I might add, using that dual view. Let's go ahead and remove the dual view and make sure the info button is on. And I'll, we'll look at what that looks like here from the sample library perspective. Here I selected my string orchestra, and I've got string orchestra, legato, vibrato, etc., etc. Et this particular sample is not used by any synths or presets, which is good to know because maybe it could be expendable. Maybe I could delete this and make room for other things. If I click on the brass, we can see that that's actually being used by three programs and or synth presets. If I stack them, again, just like we saw in the piano area, they stack beautifully. And of course, we can see that the totals are here for the megabytes used and so forth. All right, let's keep moving along. Click on Program, and you can see that the programs are also filterable by banks, labeled A through H. And you can see I have nothing in my bank H, so let's go ahead and use this example. And I'm going to go to bank A, and let's say there is the Royal Grand, which I tend to use a lot. I want to click on the dual view. I tend to use it a lot, but I want it in my bank H because H is where I'm going to perform from in most cases, let's say, because I don't normally perform from any one of these areas because they're all randomly put in there, essentially random in my opinion. So I'll go ahead and just show bank H on the right panel like I've done here. And I'm going to go ahead and move the Royal Grand over to slot one of bank H. That way, when I turn my Nord keyboard on, I can go right to Bank H and get the, the programs I want. Let's say that I also use Grand Imperial, so I'll put that on Bank H, and then Grand Lady D. So now, on Bank H, I have my three favorite pianos, let's say. And then I can go down here and say, okay, well, what do I normally do? I normally do some form of an organ. So let's just say, okay, I'm definitely going to use the B3, so I'm going to put that in slot 4. So now when I go to Bank H, no matter what song I'm doing, no matter where I am, I know that I can rely on Bank H to have my main programs used. So that's a great example of why you'd want to organize a program. Now, I mentioned in Piano and Sample Library, you cannot rename or recategorize anything. But in Program Land, which is where we are now, along with Synth and Song, you can actually rename these. So let's go ahead and take that dual view off. We'll keep the organize and the info on for now, just for fun. I'll clear the filter, and now I've got all my programs here. Let's say I'm ready now to rename some of these programs. Let's just say that I don't want this called to be Bambino Upright. So now I can rename this. Let's say that I just want to call it Bambino. I can recategorize a program but I'll keep it in the upright family, but I'll just want to call it Bambino. Now I've just changed that program name. So that's how you can rename and recategorize programs. And you can do that with synths and songs as well. 
Okay, now let's quickly look at the synths. Same idea, we have 400 slots spread across eight banks. Here, instead of memory, you're seeing actually 300 out of 400 slots used. Okay, now let's talk about the synth area. Similar to the program area, I have various banks here that I can select from. I have banks one through eight. Each one holds 50 slots. And essentially this works the same way. I have a dual view, I have filters. I can move these things around. I can right click, I can rename. I can also recategorize and so forth. I can auto select. So all of those same features apply to the synth. While we're on this subject, let's click on songs. Songs also have the same amount of storage location, which is very exceptional in terms of the number of songs you can have, a total of 400 songs. From the factory, 10 are populated out of 400. One of the differences between songs and the way the synth and the programs work is yes, you can rename them, but you cannot recategorize them because there is no song category. No such thing as a song category at this time. Okay, so now we've gone through all the major nuances between the five areas. I wanted to just tell you a couple of things how the sound manager works. You'll find very quickly that there are a number of ways to do the same thing using different techniques and methods. Let me give you an example. If I'm on the program setting and I select this fourth program here, let's say I want to rename it. Well, I can right click and rename. I can click on the button rename. I can go up under the edit menu and rename. I can also select command N for a keyboard shortcut. So that's four ways to do the exact same thing. So it doesn't matter what type of user you are or how you're oriented in your own brain based on your computer experience or just your familiarity with how you like to work. It sounds like the Nord sound manager here has you completely covered. Whether you like buttons or right click or menus or shortcut keys, it pretty much works across the board. So that idea takes place for renaming files, deleting files, substitute and relink are available through all those areas and so forth. Now that you've learned some of the basic functionality and how to navigate around a little bit and about the subtleties between each area, let's talk about some functionality. Let's start with the basics. Let's say that I want to store the clavinet D6, which is a particularly small file, 5.7 megabytes, and I want to store that on my computer somewhere in a folder so that I can retrieve it later because the plan is I'm going to be deleting it and making room for more stuff. So let's talk about moving this sound up, which means move it from the Nord keyboard to my computer. So I simply select on the clavinet, click the sound up button, or I can right click and upload. Those are the same thing. Sound up and upload are identical. Or I can go from here, sound upload. So again, that reiterates how you can pretty much do everything from everywhere. But I'll click the button in this case. All right, piano upload. This will upload one or more pianos from the instrument. If the source is set to bank, the pianos will be put in a folder with the same name as the source bank. So it's just a way to organize it if I actually selected the whole bank. Now, if I clicked on the bank, yes, I could actually select and move up an entire bank of pianos. But first, let's just take this one piano and upload it. Then it will direct me to where I'd like to store that on my computer. I'll go ahead and put it on the RAM disk just as a place for me to store it. I'll click Choose. And you'll see here that almost immediately, because it's such a small file, that file has gone up. And this is my status bar and my status text message that says Upload Completed Successfully. All right, let's take this a step further. Shift-click the clavinet, the Italian harpsichord, and the Italian harpsichord 1D, all three of those, and click Sound Up. Now I've selected three pianos, and I'll upload those, and I'll put those on the RAM disk. And there they go. Let's go check that RAM disk and see what's there already. All right, and you can see here they are, and if I look at the size, they'll probably be pretty close to what they were on the Nord. The Nord might actually invoke additional compression, so you might see that the, the size on the Nord is slightly smaller than the size on your actual hard drive. That's just a pro tip there. Okay, so those are my sounds. So if I want to preserve those, I have them. So let's take an example scenario that is actually real life. I happen to love this Italian grand piano. And on the Nord Electro 5D, the grand piano is an extra large. Well, on the Nord stage, they decided to put the large, probably to make room for the other extra larges like the Grand Imperial or the Royal Grand, which are fantastic pianos. But I happen to favor, my favorite of all is the Italian Grand. That's the piano I love the most. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to 
remove the large Italian grand and substitute that for a extra large Italian grand. Okay, so first, in order to do that, I need to go to the Nord site and go get the extra large Italian grand. So let's quote quickly do that, and you'll see how that works. All right, I'm going to the Nord Keyboards website. I'm going to click on Sound Libraries. From here, I'm going to go to the Piano Library. I know this is a grand, so I'll click on the Grand Piano. I know that it's the Italian Grand, so I'll pick on the Italian Grand. And of course, I'm going to go right to the top. This is the Grand Italian Grand, probably Fazioli, Extra Large 5.3, and it's 182 megabytes. I'll go ahead and click on the download for that. I'll put it on my RAM disk, just as a place to put it. So this will take however long it takes based on your internet speed. Now, while that's happening, I need to figure out how I'm going to get that on there because we already know that I've only got 29 or 28 megs free, 28.9 megs free, yet this is 182 megs. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to fit this on there. So what I could do is I could just easily just say, okay, well, I'll kill the Royal Grand. Well, if I do that, look at where it's used. The Royal Grand is used everywhere. It's used on 172 programs. So that's a big sacrifice. And then what am I going to substitute that for? Or I suppose I could just substitute the Royal Grand with the Italian Grand and, and leave it at that. But that's not really what I want to do. What I really want to do is just substitute anything that's currently using the Italian Grand, these nine programs, with the extra large. That way it sort of preserves the original integrity of where the pianos are used in the original programs from the factory. So let's see what we can do. First, let's just go ahead and attempt it. Now I know it's not going to work because we don't have enough RAM, but uh, let's just go ahead and do it anyway. I'm going to click, right click and hit substitute, or I can use the substitute button here. And the substitute button is a very handy, very clever thing. So it allows you to substitute a file of your choosing in the piano family. So let's go to my RAM disk here and pick that sound that I just downloaded, which is right here, the Italian Grand Extra Large, and I'll click Open and Substitute. And of course, my first me message comes, Substitute failed, you need 182, or you tried 182, you need 126. Okay, so what should we do? Well, first of all, I have an idea. I want to get rid of my harpsichords, because I don't really use the harpsichords. So let's go ahead and Shift-click those. And, well, that's 38 meg. It's not everything, but let's go ahead, and I'm going to right-click and delete, or I can hit the delete key on the keyboard. Here's my message. Are you sure you want to delete these four pianos? And it talks a little bit about these pianos are in use. If you proceed, 19 programs using these pianos will be incomplete. Tip, if you want to replace a piano with another and relink the programs using the old piano to use the new piano, please use the substitute command from the toolbar, which is what we're doing right now. But I'm just going to go ahead and click yes. Now I've just deleted four harpsichords. If I go immediately to the program area, it will highlight in orange all those that are incomplete because I've removed those particular harpsichords. And it even tells me which ones they were that I removed. All right, so that's an interesting tidbit. Let's not worry about that just yet. Let's go back to the piano and let's see if I can go ahead, go to the grand and Let's go to the Italian Grand, right-click, substitute, and see if I have enough room. I think we all know the answer. The answer is, I don't have enough room, but why did I do that? So that I can see, all I need now is another 17 meg. Please delete some files, at least 17.7 .7 meg. So that gives me a clue as to what I need to do this. So that won't take much. Let's see what else I can do. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get rid of the honky-tonk piano? No offense to those people who like honky-tonk, but that'll give me another 55 meg. And I can see here that it's used on a few programs, seven, but it's not the end of the world. I'll hit the delete key on my keyboard. It warns me. I'll click yes. And now I've just gotten rid of the honky-tonk piano. And of course, that probably means more of my programs are empty-handed. Yep, there's more disconnects here, but that's fine. All right, now let's go back to my Italian Grand and click on it, right-click, substitute, browse for that brand new extra large. Here it is, 191 meg. Click open, substitute. Now the regular large Italian Grand is being substituted for the extra large. And you can see here that it's predicting that that will take eight minutes. It's also doing a little cleaning process. 
So I'll come back here after this is done and we'll continue. Okay, and we're back. We see here that the substitute completed successfully. I now have the Italian Grand Extra Large, and notice how it automatically linked itself to the existing programs that it was linked to before when it was just a regular large. So the substitute is a huge and handy feature when you're ready to either upgrade the sounds or downgrade the sounds for that matter. You might find that this uh, Royal Grand will do just fine in a large or even a medium, so you can downgrade that and really save yourself a lot of room by uh, reducing that from 199 to something less. Now you'll see that I have 37 megabytes free. Let's go ahead and put some harpsichords back because I have a lot of disconnected programs as we can see here. Maybe the clavinet D6. Let's go ahead and put that back. Then we'll see what that does. Let me click on piano and click this time sound download, which is the opposite of what we did earlier when we did a sound upload. Download means it comes from the computer onto the Nord keyboard. Now let's go ahead and get that clavinet that we stored here, right here, the D6. Click open, and it wants to know where do I want to put it. I can choose to add it to a bank, or I can replace the entire contents of bank, uh, and I can also show the details of what I'm about to do. In this case, I'm just going to add it to the bank. Here that sound is now being downloaded to the Nord keyboard, meaning it's being put on the Nord keyboard. And let's see what happens. Okay. Now, in order to find it, I have to actually go to my clavinet location here on the category. And look what happened. It automatically relinked itself, very much like a substitute. It automatically knew that it was used on the following programs, and it relinked itself. So now when I click on the programs, I have a lot less orange because I brought my clavinet back. Very nice. So we're still missing the Italian harpsichord 1B long because we removed it earlier. So we need to relink this program. Now, it shows here that it was using the piano Italian harpsichord 1 long on both panel A and panel B. That's sort of your clue as to what was going on here. It also shows that it's using... Uh, flutes and clarinets, legato, and string quartet. And you can see that we still have flutes and clarinets, legato, and we still have string quartet, so of course those are happy. It's just really dissatisfied with the fact that the Italian harpsichord 1B is missing, and that's why it's in orange. So watch how easy this is. I'll right-click, I'll click Relink Piano, and it says here, this will relink the selected program, this one here, to use a new piano instead of the current piano unknown. In other words, it doesn't know where that harpsichord piano is. So I'll give it another harpsichord to make it happy. I'll go ahead and give it the Italian harpsichord 1D lute. Now, of course, I don't have to limit it to a harpsichord or anything in that family. I can pick any piano, but I'm going to pick a, a harpsichord because it'll be like-minded in terms of how that program was originally intended to be. Watch what happens. I'll click Relink, and just like that, all these sounds are now happy, or well, that program is now happy. All right, let's see what else. Let's do a couple more here. This one is missing the honky-tonk piano. Well, we all know that I deleted the honky-tonk, and I wasn't too upset about deleting it, so I'll just right-click and relink the piano there, showing me that it was honky-tonk upright. It was a large. The heck with all that. Let's just go and link this to another piano. What would be close to a honky-tonk? Well, nothing, probably. So let's just do a bright... I don't want to do a grand. How about a... I do want to do an upright. Let's do a saloon upright. That's very similar to a honky-tonk. Let's go ahead and click Relink. And now that program is satisfied. So that's how you use the Relink option. Once you've broken your programs, you just go down and substitute them. I shouldn't use the word substitute. You just go down the list and Relink uh, whatever sound makes sense. Now, it doesn't have to be limited to pianos. If I deleted samples in the same way, I could also Relink samples like this. So I won't go through that because we've already spent enough time talking about relinking. There's just a few more options to talk about, and we're done. Next, I'll talk about bundles. So a bundle is an interesting concept where you can take a program or a synth or a song and bundle them together and produce a package that can then be transported and used in another like Nord keyboard. Or you can package it up and save it for something that you might be using later on. So let's just take a couple of programs. Let's just say that I am doing something with brass. Okay, so here are all my brass programs, programs that are oriented in and around brass. And let's just say that I want to preserve these great brass programs 
for another day. So I'll create a new folder here and I'll call it um, My Brass Programs. All right. So as you saw, I filtered by brass and I'm going to shift click these to select them all. And I'm simply going to bundle upload, which brings them from the Nord to the computer. And I'll click upload. It's now asking me, where do you want to put these? No problem. I'll put it on my desktop in a new folder called my brass programs. You'll see that's the file type. There's really no choice in that. It's just showing you the file type. I can create a new folder right here and then if I wanted to, but let's go ahead and click save. Now what this will do, and you'll learn about this in part two, but what this will do is it will look at all the different settings and the sounds used on each of these, namely these. It's going to take the electric and the sample library from here, 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 and here, combine all that and create a very efficient package. And in seven minutes, I'll have all of these programs stored with all their settings and all their sounds so that even if the receiving keyboard doesn't have the particular brass sound that I used based on the sample, it will be included in the package or in the bundle. In addition, it will have all the settings of all the effects that I'm using, all the way down to the reverb and the volumes and so forth. So I'll come back in six minutes when this is done. Okay, the bundle uploaded successfully. Let's go take a look in my folder. You can see here that I've got a program bundle and it is totaling 248.9 megabytes. So it's quite large because it includes whatever samples or pianos that I happen to have within those programs, used by those programs. So that is a bundle and this is something that you can share. Okay, so the same goes true in reverse. You can go ahead and bundle download and that will bring it from the computer to the Nord keyboard and it's going to warn you here, it's going to say, this will download the program in the bundle, in the program bundle to the destination bank, including all used pianos and samples. And it's going to add it to whatever bank I have selected. But I can say, okay, put that on bank H. And then it shows the details. It shows me the samples that it intends on including with that in great detail, by the way. So you can see exactly what that bundle consists of right here by showing the details and expanding these folders. Now I'll click download. And it's warning me here, the sample brass download already exists in this instrument. So you're downloading more than one. Do you want to have two? Do you want to replace it? So obviously I just uploaded the bundle. Now I'm downloading it just to show you. But that gives you an idea of how to move those bundles around and how to use them import and export. Okay, there's a couple other features I want to show you before we get to the backup and restore portion and close out this video. Uh, the first thing you want to look at is there's an option here that says clean deleted space. So when you're working with these sound files and you decide to delete some, the storage area of the Nord becomes a little, let's say, messy. So they've given you this option to clean any deleted space, thereby making the allocation of these sounds as efficient as possible and creating that much more room for new sounds. So that's an option that you can do here. So I'll go ahead and do that. And you'll see here that it's actually cleaning the space within my sample library. And that doesn't take too long, but it's a nice housekeeping measure that is really not talked about too much. And then you have the format. Are you sure you want to format the sample library partition? All files will be lost. So this is a quick way to delete all the samples in one fail swoop and get that whole storage area very efficient. I'll say no for now. I get the same option here under piano. I can clean deleted space. Okay, and I've come back after that's done, and I can also format the piano memory area and delete all the memory at once. Notice that under program, there is no such thing as cleaning deleted space, but there is such a thing as format. If I formatted the program area, it would mean that I want to format the program partition, all files will be lost. I can do the same with synth as far as format goes, and I can do the same with song where I can format, but again, I can't delete clean deleted space because the memory works a little differently on program synth and song. So here's an option here where you can export sound lists. This is a very cool feature. If you just want to quick, quickly get a printout of everything on your sound list, I'll choose the desktop and it's going to create a quick sound list. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, it's created several things here. I've got the Nord Stage 3 piano as HTML. Look at that. There's my pianos, all my grands and uprights and things like that. Then it's also created the Nord Stage 3 program list. This is all the programs in HTML. Then I have the sample library as HTML. And then the song library as HTML. 
and then the synth settings as HTML. So it's a great way to quickly get this information out of your computer and do other things with it, or even just to print it, because printing from here, there is really no print option, as you can see. So, But it would be very easy to print a list like this right from your browser as HTML. Okay, let's take a look at one other thing here. Under the Nord Sound Manager menu, if you click on the About, you get this handy-dandy screen, which tells you not only the version of the Sound Manager in the build, but it also shows you the supported products and OS versions. So this is a quick matrix of where you can see, okay, I'm using the Nord Stage. It's version 3.12 is the minimum, uh, up to version 5.04 is the recommended. So this is the OS version of the Nord keyboard, as it relates to this version of the sound manager and the appropriate keyboard. So that's a quick little cheat sheet there. Another not too common function, but one that you should know about. If I happen to be looking at my bank D of my programs and I select one through 27, I can have an option here under edit, which inverts that selection and selects the opposite. So now it'd be 28 through 50. So that's just a quick little handy dandy invert selection. I don't know if it's used all that much. Uh, while we're on that same menu, let's look at preferences. Here you can see that you can enable the file cache. Uh, the file cache stores samples and pianos that have been sent between your computer and your Nord instrument. This greatly increases the speed and upload and backup operations. So it currently shows that the file cache is enabled and I currently have 1.6 with a total of 10. So I've got 1.6 in my cache and it's showing me the location of my cache and you can even change that. Uh, these are advanced features that you probably don't need to worry about too much. I would just go ahead and leave the default setting to enable, and this will in fact make your sounds move a little quicker. There's a view here where you can say organize dual view info. That's again the same things as these three, info, organize, and dual view. Uh, then you have the find, which basically puts your cursor here, so don't be confused by that. And then you have the auto select, which is the same as this. So you can see that these menus are multi-purpose, and there's some quick keys here, shortcut keys as well. Okay, with that said, the last thing we want to talk about is backup and restore, and you will have successfully learned the Nord Sound Manager from A to Z. Okay, in this part of the video, I want to show you guys how to restore from a factory backup. Let's take a look at what we can do here. First, you want to go to Nord Keyboards. Then you want to click on Downloads, then Nord Stage 3. Then Nord Stage 3 Factory Restore is what you're looking for. You want to click on that file. It's quite a large file. Put it on, uh, on your computer somewhere. Save it. And this sucker is pretty large. It's 2.57 gigs. So once that's downloaded, you can then restore your entire Nord keyboard from the factory settings. So all you need to do is click on the Restore button. It's going to ask, okay, where is your restore information? I happen to have already downloaded it, so I'll go ahead and use this. Then it begins doing its thing, synchronizing, verifying backup archive. So this line is going to continue on. Here it is. It says the contents of your instrument will be replaced by the contents of backup archive Nord Stage 3 Factory Restore Revision B or Rev B. Do you wish to continue? And I can show the details here, and it shows me and this is very interesting screen, it shows me all the different things that it's going to really replace. So I've got the settings, I've got the pianos, all the pianos are going to be replaced, all the songs are going to go back to their default settings from the factory, the synths, the sample library, live, uh, that's the live area, whatever is preset for the live sounds, and then all the programs here throughout the Nord keyboard. So um, I can expand or collapse this, although yeah, it's working. It's just a little slow to respond. And then I'm going to click Restore. So Restore will now reconfigure the Nord keyboard in its entirety and bring it back to factory settings. Now, the same rule applies for when you backup the Nord. If you click Backup and you create a backup, that first backup is going to take a while because it has to do everything from scratch and move all that data for the first time. But if I go ahead and make a few changes and want to do another backup and say this is a refreshed backup, this is now the backup I want to maintain, you click backup again, it will increment. In other words, it will only move the changed areas. It'll keep all the things from your first backup. So it's incremental, which means it's more efficient. And the first time you do things, it's going to be a little slower than the second time. So in the case here of restoring this backup, it's going to look at what I already have synchronize it and get it going. Now it does say here it's going to take 76 minutes, so I'll come back when this is done and we'll see what happened.
And here you can see the restore completed successfully. And if you look around here, the piano, the pianos were all put back to where they need to be. And samples are back to where they need to be. The programs are all back to factory settings, along with the synth. And there are actually songs installed when you first set up your keyboard from a restore. Well, I hope this Nord Sound Manager training and tutorial series was helpful. I hope we learned a lot how the Nord Sound Manager works, in particular with the Stage 3. I hope to see you on the next video. Please subscribe if you like the content. Thumbs up and all that good stuff. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.